video, we're going to learn some more from Josh about um, how to use the file stream connector and some additional utilities that we've built to make it useful in more broad sense. Yes. Yeah, so um, as we talked about before with the file stream connector, we needed a table in order to use as a query source. So here's the map that we were working with recently. And we can see that we have a file storage table that we used that contained the file information that we were working with to populate the binary fields. Mm -hmm. Okay, so, so this is a requirement of Scribe Online. We need a source to query. And one thing is a lot of people have files in a directory somewhere that they want to attach to a target such as Salesforce or Microsoft Dynamics. Mm -hmm. and but they don't have a database that's already populated with the path to all of those files. Right, and the, this file stream connector doesn't read the file system directly to keep track of where the files are. There's a separate utility that you're going to show us that scans the file system yes. and then loads the information about what files are in the file system, what their names are, when they were last updated, those types of things, and populates this table. And this table is actually the source for the file stream connector. Exactly. So what you're teaching us in this video was all about how do you populate this table? What utility do you have for that? Exactly. Okay. So the idea is, again, uh, within SQL Server, we have a table that has no data in it. Uh, and that table is created by this script. What we're doing is we're creating a SQL Server specific utility that creates a master file list table that is for keeping uh, in sync with your local file system. The script creates that table. Uh, there's a number of views that it creates, uh, update files and delete files. That way you can just reference a view without having to have mm -hmm. uh, a native query uh, uh -huh. associated with it. Um, and we also, uh, in installing this store procedure, we also have to enable a feature in SQL Server called XP Command Shell. Which these are extended store procedures that SQL Server has available natively, but mm -hmm. they're disabled uh, by default uh, for security reasons, because enabling the XP Command Shell gives SQL Server access to the local file system. Now, that's just SQL Server that has access to that file system, not Scribe Online. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, the XP Command Shell uh, enabling script uh, is part of the install file scanner uh, SQL script. Uh, and it allows SQL Server to run store procedures on the local file system. So we install that script, and it gives us this table, an empty master file list table, and it gives us our views that uh, check that table to see whether or not files need to be updated or deleted. Mm -hmm. It also installs the files, a scan for files script. So we're actually going to run that right now. And what that's done is it's SQL Server's gone out and it's scanned this directory and it has populated that table. Now, what it's done, you can see here, uh, we have all kinds of information about those files, the file sizes, whether or not they're new to the system, mm -hmm. and whether or not they should be marked for deletion. So, if, so excuse me. So if we deleted a file on at the operating system level, and then ran this file scanner again, it would mark this marked for delete column as exactly. With and a you know what? Value. We're actually going to do that. I'm going to move that file out of the way here. Okay. And we're going to come back in and rerun this guy. And what we should see oh. is one of the files is now marked for delete. Very good. So in this way, if you run this stored store procedure on a scheduled basis, mm -hmm. you can keep an entire directory, an entire file system in sync with a table within SQL Server. And that's the idea. Now that we have a table that's now in sync with your system, we can now take that information and keep a synchronized set of that data in Salesforce. Right. Synchronized set of attachments. Exactly. Another way to think of it. Okay. Exactly. So now we see how that works. What we'll do is we'll come into our solution here, and I'm going to go into a map that I've already built that does exactly this, and we'll talk about some of the steps here real quick. Uh, the first thing we would do is we're querying that update files view that we created in that script. And okay. so it's querying for all of the files that are new or have been updated based on their time. This is using one of the two views that that store procedure created. Exactly. Okay. 
Uh, so what we'll do is we get a list back of all of the files that need to be worked with, and then we use our create file step, which is from our file stream connector. Okay. And we do exactly as we mentioned before. We map our file path, and we wait for the file data to be populated. Here's our insert into our target system. Right now I'm using our sample ERP system, but it could be anything, Salesforce, Dynamics, Mm -hmm. uh, and you can see that we're taking the file stream create information and we're mapping it to the byte array in our target system. And when we're done with that, what we're now doing is we're going back to our source table and we're updating the updates file uh, field to be false. That way the next time we run, if we've got thousands and thousands of attachments, mm -hmm. we don't want to process all of them every time. We only want to process the ones that so have changed. So when, when that scanning utility runs, it sets the value in that column it's, one way, and when your map runs, it sets the column the other way. Exactly. Or sets the value in the column the other way. Exactly. And, that, and that's this right here. We have our mm -hmm. update file and our mark for delete, and that's all based on our date timestamp that comes with the file. Mm -hmm. So as things get updated and changed, uh, you can keep that the latest version of your attachment synchronized with all of your target systems. Okay, so that's how that works. And while we're here, I might as well turn on the delete since we already discussed it. Mm -hmm. We'll go into our delete files map and we'll see that it does just about the same thing. We're querying the delete files view for all of those files that are marked as needing to be deleted. Mm -hmm. We will then go into our target system and we will delete out of that field and then we will update our master file list with uh, and delete that item. Mm -hmm. so, so we have a delete step in here. Okay, and so hopefully, since these will run in order, the very first thing it will do is it will insert both of those, or, or all three of those files mm -hmm. into our target, mm -hmm. and then it will run the delete files, and it will actually delete the one that we told it to delete. So, let's go back here. And we will run our solution. Okay, so we can see that that uh, failed on a record, so let's take a look at what it failed on. And we will view our errors. And what we can see is it says that file was not found. And look what it didn't find. It didn't find the file that we moved over here, so that it only found two, so mm -hmm. that it actually couldn't insert all three. Okay. It only inserted two. Okay. Um, so it did exactly what it was supposed to do. And if we go back to our SQL Server and we open up what our target system is, which is our stand-in for our, our sales enablement system, Salesforce or whatever, and we will open that table up. And what we see is that both of those items are in there with the binary data populated. And what we could do is we could do the same thing. We could go and we can make a modification to those. We can have our script run and we can run our maps again. So, so that file scanning script, mm -hmm. that, that store procedure, we can run on a regular basis uh, and keep, that, keep files in sync. All right, so that's kind of the round trip of the whole, how that whole file scanning works. Exactly, so if you've got a large enterprise and you know, folks are used to already keeping all of their, their materials on a particular shared drive for the entire company, mm -hmm. you can actually use that drive and these utilities to keep that file, the, that drive, and all of those attachments in sync with a data system okay. somewhere. There's something else I want to touch on, which is um, you were talking about security before and about giving access to the local file system through the SQL Server. Yes. How does Scribe Online, the agent that's running, get access to that? 
And how can you control security on the Scrum Online agent? Absolutely. So um, as we talked about before, um, the connection information for the file stream connector actually requires a path that's mm -hmm. available to the Scrum Online agent. And of course, we do require that you have a local on-premise agent mm -hmm. running for this, this uh, feature. So this, this is a connector that does not run in the cloud. And uh, it runs with the machine. You can see I have a virtual machine here running. Here's my Scribe Online agent. And that agent has all the same privileges that the agent service is running as. All right. So here we've got it as a default local system, but you could have your organization set it up to a user that has access only to those Scribe directories the scribe connector directories, right. and also to any of the file directories that you right. want it like to have that access that network to. share is where those files that you want to bring over. Exactly. Are okay. And keeping in mind that your SQL server must also have the same privileges to that file share in order for that extended store procedure XP command shell to run properly. Okay, great. Well, Joshua, thanks a lot for sharing this information with us. You're welcome. Uh, I should also point out that um, these utilities are not something that we have in the marketplace on Scribe Online, at least not at this point. So if you're interested in getting a hold of them, uh, get in touch with Scribe, uh, ask them to get in touch with the pre-sales department, and we can get you in contact with these utilities, these scripts, and the file stream connector itself. Absolutely. Thank you.